Welcome back to DXB Today. Tonight we're talking entrepreneurship and what it takes to have that long lasting legacy. And when it comes to generational wealth, what it takes and makes to do that with some of the biggest experts in the world. And our next guest is contributing to that with the local and the international expansion of the UAE's economy by creating and innovating business opportunities and helping to build the next generation of leaders in this region. Please welcome Hani Kerbaj to the show. Thank you, Hani, for joining us. This is Thank such a pleasure, man. Thank you. Now, um, you work with your brothers. Mm -hmm. Now, this is an interesting concept for a lot of people because it kind of cuts the cuts through the uh, the guesswork mm -hmm. of knowing uh, what your your colleagues are going to say and and what your partners are going to say because you've known them all your life. It never had a problem. It was all clear from the start. You know, uh, working with family is always pleasant if you set the right guidelines from the start. And uh, especially if your father, the founder itself, was there to set these guidelines and speak of what we call a taboo in our family uh, culture nowadays, speaking about, you know, who runs this, who runs that, who owns this, who owns that. So that's the issue that we don't address this situation from an early stage to avoid future disputes and then things become you know out of hand usually at one point so you had like a round table at the fella group and it, it was, was just like right let's get into this everyone let's go through this prenuptial and understand <laughs> what, what's going to happen very true yeah. very true but we did it differently we flew out to Qashqais, portugal and we sat there in a house in the middle of nowhere uh, up in the mountains for exactly three weeks and we spoke about every single point and concern that we had Beautiful. right on the table and it was all clear so what happens as issues do come up though do you guys i've heard of companies and with their partners having counseling sessions mm -hmm. or going to therapy together to address issues so mm -hmm. that they never take on another level do you find that you're still maintaining the same relationship with them or do you not want to hang out as much in your free time how does that change the dynamics because obviously you both have that taste and, and honey so very interesting question uh, the best thing about our relationship is that we live in different places except for my little brother he lives next to me, but I see my older brother living in Canada. I see him more than I see my little brother living here with us. So when you live far, you become closer than ever. And the fact that my older brother is running the business in Canada, uh, real estate and uh, F&B and different businesses, uh, it's, uh, you know, we update each other on daily basis on what's happening. And I'm more involved here with the construction, uh, our schools, uh, agriculture in Syria and uh, you know, uh, startups. So we also invest in e-commerce. We have an e-commerce company in Morocco that uh, has been running for the past two years. We've done amazing. So we focused on also investing in such startups. <coughs> nice. And so how do you decide where to expand to? Because you're talking about international. You've got Morocco, you've got Canada. Mm -hmm. Where's next for you guys? And how do you decide between all of you? So let me start with what's happening next, where we're heading to. It's Nigeria. Uh, we have a plan I cannot really speak much about uh, until we announce it, you know, uh, uh, officially, but uh, that's where we're heading to next. So the way we look at it is we try to always come up with solutions for any problem out there. And one of the problems that we saw was that there is no such company in Nigeria. And these countries are based on trust and there is no trust sometimes in certain businesses. So we found the right strategic partner and we focus on finding the right strategic partner in every place we go to. <coughs> Nigeria's an interesting market, and we've been there for many years, 25 years, and it's quite tough to do business there, but also you need to have the right people on the ground. Exactly. Um, and with a family business, it's interesting because my wife set up her business, and she's been a dental surgeon all her life, and one day she came up with this idea about this beauty device that would allow to, women to make their, do their makeup in half the time. So I thought that's a great idea. Literally the next day she started researching, set up the business and came up with a concept, got the prototypes done. And then so I was like, um, to, should I invest in the business? And she's like, no, I want 100% of the business, but I'll take all your mentorship and advice. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so it's, it's interesting because and in a way I'm, I'm glad because she can make her decisions and, you know, um, and, and not with my involvement, but I'd help her when she needs the help and she feels like it's her own thing to, to get on with that. But it's good that you guys work together as a family and brother and you have that 
set of guidelines, which yeah. I think very few family businesses have, and I think it's a good, good thing very to true, encourage. Right. As you say, each, each country <coughs> is so different, and the cultures are so different. I mean, in Nigeria, we actually have manufacturing. We've been there for many years, but you know, we recently launched in China as well, and that's a completely mm, new nice. market. And the way people work, you've got live streamers um, out there who you know sell your product over live stream, mm -hmm. and um, you know, we, we invited one. Uh, lady over an influencer from China to the UK into a warehouse, did a couple of videos live to her fans and sold a million dollars worth of product in 24 hours. Was that that oh. same woman with the orange boxes? <laughs> <laughs> Does everyone know that so, video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's crazy because otherwise you, you pay an influencer to do a post. You don't know what that's going to be, but here you're live streaming, they take a commission. So it's a whole different ball game how things work. Well, social media is so different in China to it is in America or in, in UAE. True. Mm. You wear so many different hats, Hani, but if there was a passion project that has been really burning in your belly, what would that be? That would be to write a book about my father and how he started the business. Okay. That would be a very interesting book. I'm pretty sure everyone would read it. And how my mom was a powerful and a very strong woman that stood by his side and really built the house with him and built the family business with him and built us. Absolutely. Yeah. You said 40, how old is the business? So. It started in 1997 uh, in the UAE before Dubai was, you know, built. And this is where he came in. Uh, my father moved here in 1982, actually, with 50 dirhams in his pocket. Incredible. He literally had to divide like his plate into three days. That's how much you know money he had on him, which was nothing. Wow. It barely kept him going, you know. So uh, he had to support his family. He had to build a family. He had to build a business. He had a dream. He couldn't get his education. So everything he couldn't get and he couldn't do, now he's giving. The schools, he's teaching all the refugees worldwide. We have 7,000 students in our schools. We have more than 400 teachers in our schools. And I'm very proud of it. For the past three years, we've been giving them education virtually from anywhere in the world. And that's the Syrian curriculum. So they don't need to be in Syria with all the war and the problems happening. And uh, of course, the government supported a bit, you know, got. They, they gave us the license to, to help us do that. So we've invested heavily in it. We have partners, of course. Uh, same thing with the agriculture. He went back to the village in Syria and now he's just doing farming, advanced farming, uh, outdoor vertical farming. And that's something that we never expected he would do after so many years. He built the company here when it was basically a desert right. at the time. On well, the 80s, you absolutely. Know, yeah, so he started really, yep down like below the ladder you know he started from uh, a painter painting houses to driving uh, to uh, you name it every single thing absolutely would think of. love these inspiration yeah me. yeah and and we also had to deal with that like we've seen it while he was building it i think it's important to to respect the founders because in the family business um, starting something is extremely hard especially if you're a pioneer at the time mm -hmm. and you know similarly my father 50 years ago from India came to the UK and vitamins back then you'd think of vitamin C for scurvy but not really multivitamins focused in therapeutic areas to come up with that go door to door and I think the next generation is important how do you take that to a different level exactly. and build on it to make it global or to really improve things. Yeah, no, I agree with that. So. Thank you so, so much, Henny, for coming on. Much. We're so honored to have you here with us. I'm going to ask you to stay put right there and Ash, I'm going to turn to you because it's time for DXV in 60. Tej, are you ready for this? Because Let's we're going to ask you as many questions as possible within 60 seconds. All right? OK. Are you ready? Let's do it. So your time is three, two, one. Let's go. If you weren't an entrepreneur, what would you be doing? I would be doing something with music. I love playing instruments. Your first job? McDonald's. Oh. Your motto in life and in work? Um, always be learning something new. A superpower you wish you had? Better memory. <laughs> That's good. The main thing you look for before investing in a business? It's two things really, it's the person and the product. I've got to be excited about the business and believe in the entrepreneur. Your favorite spot in Dubai? Oh, um, there's so many great places in Dubai. Um, I like by the water. So for me, um, around um, Jumeirah, by the water, um, uh, anything where they can see the sea. The biggest challenge in running a family business? I think it's, um, you never switch off, right? And also people have different opinions, um, generational differences as well, trying to 
put your viewpoint to different family members or to your, uh, you know, different generation, why it works now. Earlier on, someone talked about a website where the previous generation didn't understand why you'd have that. So I think you have to make things work, but there are a lot of benefits. Sage, we have unfortunately run short of time. One last question, why Dubai? I think Dubai is progressive. Uh, it takes things seriously, takes action very quickly. Um, they want to attract people to come in. They provide great safety and opportunity for people. So I think having that forward thinking and actually acting on it um, are two different things that many countries don't get right. But Dubai does it well. Tej, thank you so much for being here. It's been an Pleasure. honor to have you on the show. Please come back. Oh, thank you, it's very kind. <laughs> yeah, you guys yeah. have been great. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. And Hani, pleasure to see you as well. Thank you, thank you so much. much. Keep doing what you're doing at the Fellow Group. It's, it's a pleasure. Nice one. Now, coming up, the fabulous, fantastic Fleur Macy is all ready to close out the night with a wonderful performance. You don't want to miss it, so stick around. <laughs>